Are you looking to update some of your software to the latest and greatest or you just want to uh, keep your software continuously updated for absolute freshness? Well, today on Spatry's Cup of Linux, I'm going to show you how to run Bleeding Edge. Okay, let's begin. First, to run Bleeding Edge on your computer, we're going to be adding some PPAs into the system. PPAs are Personal Program Archives. There are many advantages to running these because when you have these PPAs installed on your system, it will allow your update manager to send you updates to the latest versions and depending on the PPAs that you choose to install you can install a PPA for the latest stable version or if you want to get the nightly builds you can also choose to do that and another nice thing is even if you do not have that program installed on your system but you have the PPA installed anytime you use your software center or synaptic package manager you will be able to download the latest and greatest versions but one thing I need to note is that canonical does not support PPAs so use them at your own peril or pleasure I've never had any problems using them okay let's begin okay first I have a little script we're gonna play with since I have a freshly installed Ubuntu system that on my virtual machine here, we're going to go ahead and point our web browsers to sourceforge.net slash products slash bleeding edge. It's right here. And so you go ahead there and you will download this file. Uh, this is a, let this download here. This is a shell script file. Okay, and we're going to keep this. We can close the browser now. It is finished downloading. Then we go into our downloads fol folder and we have the shell script. Now, in order to run this, we need to make it executable. So we just right click on the file and select properties. Go to the permissions tab and select make the file executable. There's also a way that you can make files executable by issuing a command into the terminal. I'm not going to get that technical in this episode. Next, let's open up that terminal and let's get into our downloads folder. Okay, and then we are going to issue this command. Dot forward slash star dot sh. Okay, and then it's saying that we need to insert our password. Okay, and now we have our script running. Let's go ahead and select yes. We'll 
we'll go ahead and do the updates. Okay, now a warning came up asking us to make sure that if the uh, software uh, update window has run, you need to finish updating. We didn't have any updates that needed to be installed. Okay, now that we have this open, we have a lot of really cool things that we can add to our system. Uh, I don't recommend the Adobe Reader. It's bloated. Uh, but we can tell it to add additional repositories. I always like the latest and greatest. And then there are a number of things here that we can add. We can add the latest Flash Player, the Get Deb and Play Deb, Deb repositories. This is great if you use that website. You want to download applications and you just visit on the web page and click install here. It will let you uh, download and install from your web browser. I like that since this operating system is using Google Chrome we might want to keep that up to date we can install the Hulu viewer if you like that I have that program running that's a lot of fun media players codex and restricted extras we can get those the Linux multimedia studio which is also like uh, FL studio which I run for uh, editing uh, music is really cool you can install fonts, Pythos if you listen to a Pandora radio, Ubuntu Tweak, that's always good. If you want to have VirtualBox, we can do that as well. You want to add the YPPA Manager because we're going to use this in this episode. So let's go ahead and add that. And then once you have selected everything that you want, we'll select OK. And now it's opening our package manager. Let's see if there's any, we can go ahead and uh, close this. It's now adding it's now adding to our repositories here. So we need to read what's on the screen. We'll go ahead and press enter to continue. And it is now adding all of these repositories. And then we just need to keep pressing enter. And of course it's going to ask us, probably send us a few end user license agreements. Yes. Yes. So we'll let all of this complete and then I'll be back for the next steps. Okay, excellent. Everything has installed. And now we are presented with this question. Would you like this program to tidy up? We'll remove the old kernels. Uh, if you followed my tutorial on upgrading your kernel, this program will do that. Uh, it will also remove any programs that are downloaded from your app cache. Uh, it will remove config files for unused dev packages. And of course, it'll empty out your trash can. You want to do that? Of course you do. So we'll click yes, and it will run its local purge. And then it asks you if you want to remove the repositories that were added while using this program. Well, yes, 
if you don't want the software you installed to be updated. But no, third-party repositories can be fickle. Well, I haven't had a problem with it. I'm going to say no. I want to keep those repositories. Okay, and then it will ask us to restart the computer to apply our changes. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Let's hit log out and we will reboot. Okay, after a nice reboot, let's play with our new PPA manager. That will be here in System Tools, the Y PPA Manager. Okay, now uh, let's throw up a scenario here. Let's say that you are using the latest open shot and you want to do some 3D titling. Well, you're going to need the latest blender in order to be able to do 3D titling. So we're going to go ahead and search all PPAs in the launch pad. And let's do a search for blender. Okay. And here we go. This is the PPA for Blender 2.4 and 2.5. Okay, well, I don't know if that's the one we really want. There are a lot in here for, for Blender. So, we can actually select one and list the packages that it has in there. This PPA does not have any packages. Okay, no problem. It will bring us back to this screen and then we can go in and look for another one. This is the Blender SVN. And this shows us that we have the 2.6. This would be sufficient for running uh, with open shot so we could actually go back here we can download the selected selected package and install it or we can just add that PPA and now which where, where did it go here I forgot which one I hit Okay, that was the, no, that wasn't the one. Let me go back and find it. Additionally, you could do a search for the PPA online. This simplifies it, but Blender is too big of a program. So let me go Blender PPA. Okay, and the Blender SVN here is for the most recent builds. Now, I had this one installed and Blender was updating every single day. I got it to run okay though. So, that's the uh, Shellab Blender SVN. And it should be in this listing here. And of course, you can have uh, this is like the Natty Bleed PPA. That's actually, I think that's actually the one I have installed on my main operating system here. And go, ah, here it is the Shellab Blender SVN. So we can add that selected PPA. We need to add our password. Okay, very good. Now, when we uh, close this and we go into our package manager, I'm going to synaptic here. I 
Okay, it has been added. We can close that now. Let's make sure we reload the package manager first. This sometimes take a, takes a moment depending on your internet connection speed. Okay, and it looks like we have some sources here that failed to download. We'll keep a note of that. Uh, Toolatrix PPA uh, isn't working. So we can easily fix that warning by just removing that PPA from our sources list. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Go to Settings and Repositories. Go into Other Software here. You can see all these repositories that were added as a result of using the Bleeding Edge script. So all these programs are going to get updated. And let's find that Tutula one. Oh, Tutula Tricks, here it is. All right, we can go ahead and remove that one. It's listed in there twice as well. Whenever you add a PPA, it always lists it twice, one as main and one as the source code. All right. Good enough. We'll close that. Now let's do a search for Blender. Here it is. And as you can see, it's showing the 2.6.0 SVN. So this is bleeding edge, the latest and the greatest, and then you can go ahead and mark these for installation. And of course, it's going to want to uh, pull in all of its libraries, so we have to mark that as well. And all of its dependencies. All right, and then when your update manager opens up, anytime that program needs to be updated, it will download that for you. Now, I can go into a number of programs that you can do with this. So, but the thing is, I don't want to take all day uh, making a video on this sort of thing. But the YPPA Manager is your friend if you want to keep any programs that you currently have installed up to date. If you found this information to be useful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, or if you have a show request, please fill out the comments below. I'll be try my best to answer your questions uh, the best that I can. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.